welcome to Gotta Grow. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. My special guest today is Mauricio Blandino. He is with Achilles International. Last November, he was honored with a leadership award from the Brain Injury Association. I always thought he was a leader because every time I saw photos, he had a big smile and he was always leading. So it was to my surprise to learn that he's an actual participant with Achilles International. I am honored to have Mauricio as my guest. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure being on your show and pleasure to meet you once. Pleasure is all Again? mine. Oh. As I said, I, I, was, I was surprised to learn that you're actually a, an athlete, a participant. I always thought you were one of the leaders because you were so, your photo, you were so alive. It's been almost six years with Achilles and uh, I feel as though I, I am part of Achilles. I promote Achilles. I am part of that energy that uh, it enthused. Um, I started as a walker with them I, uh, as part of my rehabilitation after my uh, uh, traumatic brain injury I had in 2011. Um, something that my doctors uh, requested that I do take my physical therapy out of the lab per se. I um, got to meet Achilles International at uh, one of our chapter meetings. They were a guest speaker uh, at our group and I got to meet Alan and uh, uh, another athlete who informed us of his accomplishments. And uh, here I am now thinking of, okay, let me uh, just go to one of the meetings and get an exercise program and start walking. I never even thought of running. Uh, I never cared for running, never was a runner. Uh, I cycled, that was my biggest uh, activity. Uh, uh, joining Achilles uh, was the best thing I, I ever did, absolutely, as part of my, my recovery. Uh, this is how long ago was this? Um, I joined Achilles in 2013. Uh, this must have been New York because they haven't started to Queens or Brooklyn at that co point. Correct, correct. This was New York. We uh, meet at uh, 90th Street on the east side. Every Saturday Just, at 10 o'clock, I every know. Every Saturday at 10 o'clock, Sunday and Tuesdays at uh, 6. Uh, I never tried to miss the, uh, one of their meetings, uh, practices. Uh, it's uh, it's an energizer just being there. Uh, it, it, you could have the worst day and you show up and after your practice and meeting up with uh, the other athletes and guides, it's, it's a tremendous feeling that uh, that's generated. Um, you mentioned 90th and, uh, and 5th Avenue, Engineer's Gate. Yes. Better known to us as Engineer's, Engineer's Gate. Engineer's Gate, Lake yes. Achilles Kane. are composed of all, um, of athletes of all abilities. Uh, uh, challenges. We were inspired to see you guys out there. You guys were anxious to go, ready to go. We were wrapping up. More recently, I've, I've had many Achilles athletes here. Well, one of the first is Trisha Miley. Yes, Trisha, yes. Yes, yes. she was the inspiration for the Hope and Possibility race. Just every year now is Central Park. Um, I think every June. Yeah, I believe it's June. Yes, it's the, it's the Saturday before the Pride Run on Sunday. So it's a double header. You got the Achilles uh, Hope and Possibilities on Saturday. I think they've moved. They moved. They adjusted their schedule now. Really? It was yes. for the longest time. It was Correct. Back to uh, back. Back to back. Back to back. All right. Oh, cool. Initially, the Hope and Possibility was not considered part of the nine plus one. It was purely a volunteer race. It only. I don't know how many years, but now it is. It's grown. It's uh, over 5,000 participants. And I was there for the first one. Oh, well, fantastic. Look at that. And I remember, I'll never forget what uh, Trisha told me. Because I said, I said to her, wow, you know, there was people there with prosthetics, you know, missing arms. She said, there are also people there with injuries that you cannot see. Correct. And I said, and I had to think about that. I said, wow, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I know better now. So, uh, so I think when it, it finally hit me when I finally studied your photos, oh, I don't see your injury because you, you, you're, you're smiling and you, and, and you look like you're gliding beautifully. Some of your pictures you're up by yourself. Sometimes you're with the group and it looks like you're the leader, you know, because of your it, magnetism. It, it's given me a whole new platform where I'm springing off from. Uh, um, 
uh, sharing my experience with as many who like to listen to my story, uh, particularly those members from the Brain Injury Association. We're a handful there now. Uh, I just had Achilles um, at one of our chapter meetings again to introduce Achilles. We have more participants now coming over. Uh, yes, I, I, physical activity, socialization factor, is those two important things for any kind of recovery, uh, not just brain injury. Yeah. So that's something I, I enjoy sharing uh, with others. Okay. How did you into your brain. A simple uh, fall on steps uh, and uh, developing a, uh, an internal hematoma, which I wasn't aware of uh, what had happened internally. I didn't give it much attention, just took it as another blow to the head, another knock into the noggin. This was in 2011, June 25th, 2011. You can't forget that date, I can't. Okay. It sounds I mean, like you didn't go immediately for treatment. No, I didn't. Uh, it was um, a week later or so when I started um, experiencing some symptoms. And uh, luckily, I had already scheduled uh, uh, on my calendar a uh, doctor's appointment for my annual physical. So I figured yeah, I even waited a, a day or two longer just to uh, kill two birds with one stone, per se. And, uh, during the physical, I told the doctor, oh, by the way, yes, I had this blow to the head, um, and now I'm experiencing the fullness in my head, the dizziness when I would bend down, um, a little sluggish in, in as far as uh, uh, the thinking process. And he uh, was, is associated with Elmhurst Hospital, so he called Elmhurst and uh, radiology and uh, had them... Um, make an appointment and wait for me that same day. And I went over to Elmhurst and got my uh, CT scans and uh, I never left. They found my cranial, well, they found the bleeder, they saw the bleeder and the, the images showed my cranial cavity uh, filled with coagulated you know, blood and uh, cr cranial fluid. And all this was adding pressure to the brain and uh, actually shrinking it because it, the cranial cavity wasn't um, uh, uh, consuming, I should say, with the word, uh, uh, the uh, fluid mm -hmm. uh, ra rapidly mm -hmm. or as, as, it, as it should. So it uh, had no place to go but um, press down on the brain. Um, so everything changed at that moment. Uh, they now uh, were calling on the... Uh, neurosurgeons, uh, doctors came by and the whole staff was there and looking at my image and they began to ask me all questions, symptoms, and um, and they were surprised that I was only complaining about a couple of things. Uh, they, they said, uh, literally, I should be dead because of the amount of you know, fluid in well, that's, my that's brain. That's a positive yeah. thing to say. You should yeah, be Yeah, I dead. know, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. Now we can laugh. <laughs> I can. Yeah, I mean, I always seek humor out of were, everything. Were, were, were you there by yourself? I was there by myself. I was there by myself. I now that I'm hearing everything here, now they they were not, they're polishing me up to go and taking me to the uh, ER section uh, uh, to and to the triage and, and to prep me. Uh, now they call. They pick. Uh, they rang the, the uh, uh, they called on individuals to come down the doctors the neurosurgeons to this is an go, emergency uh, in an emergency this is an emergency we, I needed immediate Im uh, surgery yeah. um, and uh, here I am all of a sudden uh, experiencing an out of body experience and looking down at this whole picture what's happening around me and uh, I'm shaking my head you want to open my head and now they're discussing what they want to do with me and it it, it was unreal to hear so, that's interesting so you had no time you had a you, they're, they're going to give you any choice we're doing it now or Ooh. die basically basically wow. i um I'll well, share something funny with yeah. you, which I haven't, which I don't share much with others. Uh, it's now here I am in, in the uh, triage, and there's the nurses prepping me, taking my vitals, and uh, I ask if if you could excuse me for a moment. Where's the men's room? Uh, she points to it down the hall. I 
went to the uh, towards the men's room. I uh, walked down the hallway, kept walking, and uh, passed the vest room. Found my first exit door and left the hospital. Uh, grabbed a cab at the corner and headed home. Got my phone and started doing the 911 calls to my brothers and sister. Meet me at the house. Uh, um, so. So I did escape from Elmhurst, uh, but <laughs> it, it, they caught up with me about an hour later, uh, explaining to me the um, the urgency of the, of the situation. And uh, I, I I began to understand what they was. I, I understood what they were saying. Yes, with the, all what they but showed me. A little little. I I, I needed little 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 space time. there, a little family time too. Um, eventually, I went back. Uh, and I didn't get surgery until the following um, morning, about 6 a.m. Uh, uh, it was too late, uh, I guess, for the evening because I had to... <laughs> made the escape. Made the escape. Escape, escape from elsewhere. <laughs> and, um, yes. Uh, did they put a plate? Or how did no, they... they didn't put a plate on. I. They... they Cut out pieces and uh, put them back together again, and uh, skull. right my own you know, skull and um, held them in place with titanium screws. So uh, you could see some of them are you know kind of heaving out. That's a little wow. problem I'm having now, which I'm going to um, uh, have looked at uh, okay. uh, in, later this month. Okay, uh, you know, I call it the, the shifting of the Titanic plates. <laughs> <laughs> You could tell winter is coming or storm is oh, coming. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. When your muscles, are the, well, the cranial muscles contract because of the cold weather, uh, yes, it, it does add pressure to it. And I have this little epic center, I call it, uh, where uh, it, uh, everything just, you know, the, the discomfort disperses from. Oh, gosh. Uh, you are very fortunate. So, um, in, in an essence, uh, when they did that operation, you will be born because... By, by, I, by, by all rights, you should you yes. should, should have been dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm well, very you, grateful. For, yeah. I, I want to mention, you know, one of my best friends, Joy Johnson. Uh, she, her last marathon was the 2013 or 25th executive. She was in her 80s, so much older than you. She fell and hit her head, refused doctors, uh, treatment. She finished her marathon. She hit her. She fell a mile out of forget twenty three, mm -hmm. something like that. Finished it the twenty fifth. Went to see her buddy Al Roker on the Today Show the next morning, which was a standard thing to do. Everybody looked for her. She had a big uh, band over her head. She's oh, it's worse than what it looks. It's not as bad as it looks. Went back to the hotel room and uh, lay down, and uh, she never woke up. Uh, so it could be a very dangerous thing. And I think the actress, uh, one of the Redgraves, Vanessa Redgrave, I think. Oh, Vanessa Grave, Redgrave's uh, daughter, uh, married to uh, Liam oh, Nielsen. Oh, Liam Nielsen. The actor. Correct, the actor. Uh, she had a skiing accident and uh, took a blow to the head. Didn't give it attention, uh, refused further medical attention, and, and she, uh, she, passed. she passed, I think, the following day. It, it's something that I advocate for is brain, uh, brain injury uh, awareness, concussion awareness. Uh, I'm, like I mentioned, with the Brain Injury Association, um, uh, I make myself an, an example of that situation. I was a lucky one to, well, have survived. You know. survived. You said that uh, you weren't a runner. So you were inspired when the uh, the Achilles came to the Elmsford or to the brain, to, into the brain, to our brain chapter meeting. Yes. To the talk. yes, yes. Where is the uh, Brain Injury Association? Where is it? Well, is that it's a, chapter? A, it's a uh, national, um, uh, state and uh, local chapter. I'm with the New York City chapter itself. Uh, we meet down at 83 Maiden Lane, uh, in the Fulton Street area. Uh, it's a monthly meeting. Uh, it's a social uh, a, a gathering, uh, something that's important for yeah, uh, anyone being around uh, like individuals just to relax and uh, talk and have games. Uh, activities coordinator for the uh, chapter itself. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, Another leadership role. <laughs> 
see, I do things which I find uh, that uh, were, are useful for my own recovery and see that it also helps others. Uh, and so I also create activities that are fun for me and, uh, uh, so, and I share that. Uh, we just had uh, musicians from the Manor School of Music. Uh, oh. uh, one of my uh, guides, my uh, trainers uh, with Achilles, uh, she, um, Annabelle, uh, works at Manus. I didn't know she was uh, from Manus uh, until one day we were running and I asked, what, so what do you do? And she tells me that and then the light bulb just lights up. Hey, can you have one of your, some of your students at one of our chapter meetings? And within a few weeks, we had a violist and a cellist play beautiful music for the chapter. I like the way you um, think. I like uh, the way you move. Okay, so and, so you, you had the operation, obviously it was a success, you're sitting here. It was, I had issues with my balance coordination. There were you know, uh, deficits that I had to deal with and um, my doctor wanted me to take my physical therapy out of the, uh, you know, out of the shop and to the park. So I joined Achilles, like I mentioned, and uh, uh, at the beginning it was just walking around uh, on the bridle path around the reservoir. And this is, getting, was, it, was a cane at the time? No, uh, no, I had given up the cane and uh, that was a short time. I, I refused any, uh, any aid. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to regain my balance on my own. Or any artificial aid, but you, yeah, uh, obviously you had a guide, a human. Yes, yes, be yes, sure. correct. My issue was the coordination of my balance, uh, uh, getting the rhythm of the step, the walk, the arm movement, the breathing, to get into sync with it and, and hold on to that rhythm for a long uh, period of time. I am I'm always learning new things by Achilles. I didn't know they took that kind of care uh -huh. because I, I think some people get the impression, like all running clubs, you show up and immediately you're on your bike or you're on your wheelchair. But here, you, what you're saying is Achilles recognized this, oh, wait a minute, you gotta crawl before you walk, you gotta walk yes, before yes. you run. It, so you already knew how to crawl, now you need to how to walk again. And so they took the trouble, the attention. For the any athlete, for any athlete, they uh, see where they are at that point and uh, help them along at their pace. Um, they assign them guides that uh, will walk with them again at any pace or and if you begin to pick up your pacing, then they'll deal bring in someone well, else to I, help I you along. I see Your pace or mine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, go, yes. Well, my pace was why Oh, wow. Because, you know, I did the, uh, the inaugural uh, Achilles Hope and Possibility way back when with uh, Trisha Mali, I should say, started it. And I was very impressed. I was in that starting line with, you know, with so-called able-bodied or mainstream athletes with the Achilles, which which is a beautiful, beautiful idea that Dick Tramp said, hey, you know, let's put them all together. To absolutely, win the, the race. absolutely. And, yeah. and gosh, you know, I had no idea. I, you guys were good. You guys were, you know, you guys were motoring, you know. We were motiv motivated. <laughs> we motivate each other. What pushed me further to after I got my rhythm and I see I, I my walk and running is mechanical I, I I think of every step more so with my right foot how it lands it's knocked me down a number of times holding that uh, getting into the, the the rhythm and the flow of the of the stride and holding it and holding that uh, emotion uh, and slowly I picked that up and it turned into a, a fast walk. From a fast walk, it turned into a slow jog. And I, I, I began to see, witness what was happening physically, mentally, emotionally. Everything was, you know, coming into play. Uh, and, and the friendships that developed, uh, the social factor, again, it, it's such an important factor. And as you said, the case has grown because now there's a Queen's chapter. We have a Queen's chapter. chapter. I run with them, too, on Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. at the 111th Street entrance on 56th uh, Avenue. Uh, just the entrance to the uh, the zoo in the carousel to the park. Wendy Faf. Wendy Faf is uh, the uh, director there. Yeah, Absolutely. she's great. I had her on the show before she started the uh, the Queen's chapter. A phenomenal woman. Absolutely. And, uh, John Pierre is the John one of Pierre. the uh, stalwarts there. 
I'm one of my idols. Per sure. Here on the show, the uh, the ultimate running, running machine, machine. <laughs> and he runs like a superhero with the cape. Yes, yes, yes. Very yes. inspiring group, and then of course now Queens, I guess one of the relatively new chapters uh, was the Nicoletta Narangas. Oh, that's Brooklyn. Oh, that's Nicoletta. Brooklyn. I'm oh, sorry, Brooklyn. That's right. I already Wendy is Queens, uh, and, uh, and and Nicoletta, Nicoletta is Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Right. And she uh, has a phenomenal voice. I mean, uh, she sang the national anthem, I think, at one of the hopes and possibilities, if I'm right. She sings many times, and then, and then she sings in her, uh, you know, uniform, her running uniform, and then she knocks, takes out, off. knocks <laughs> out the race. And, uh, and, and, and she's very gifted in many ways. I had her here on the show, and she has this unique way of relating to our young people to our eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, yes, our yes. youngsters. Very She gifted. has a kids program. Um, run for fun. Uh, run for fun, correct. Achilles International also has a kids program that uh, enables individuals uh, to take on any, uh, uh, to take on running, basically. It's, okay. uh, running is fun. Running is uh, motivating. Okay, well, let's go back to, to, your, to your story. So, as you were developing your, your motor skills, your balance, your walking skills, your jogging skills, more than jogging, little running, were you working? What was your profession? No. I mean, because... Oh, prior to my um, injury, I, I, managed, uh, for, I managed operations for a jewelry manufacturing company in New York. I've been in the jewelry industry for over 30 years. Yeah. Uh, David Rock uh, was the name of the, uh, of the company, the last company I worked with. Uh, I was with them since inception of the company. We were four and grew to over 40 individuals. Um, what kind of work was that again? Jewelry manufacturing, yes. Uh, precious, so you make bracelets? Uh, chains, uh, well, uh, yeah. uh, gold with diamonds, precious stones, some precious stones, uh, the whole operations and distribution too. Uh, wow. We marketed, uh, merchandised our own product. Uh, uh, David uh, Rockmuth, his name, uh, he comes from a Romanian jewelry family. He uh, ventured off on his own to create David Rock uh, Manufacturing. And um, I had worked uh, uh, previously for another manufacturing company, uh, an enormous one, uh, Feature International. Uh, there was another David there, Gabe, David Goldchild, who introduced me to David Rockmuth uh, and informed me that he uh, uh, was looking for someone uh, with overall experience uh, uh, to help him start up this new company. That's very interesting. It sounds like it's, uh, it's a technical skills, but you have such personable skills, such personality, such empathy. Did, did the two combine in your case? I, it helps. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm more emotional now, but uh, you're right. You need that personal um, touch uh, with uh, manufacturing sales. I, you know, we were a small company. I had to wear different hats uh, all day long. Um, and uh, well, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, my injury uh, caused uh, my inability to um, work with detail. Um, with your hands. With my hands, vision, conversion. Um, uh, so I'm not in that in that uh, capacity anymore. I've retired now, but I still do with uh, I still deal with the jewelry on my own personal basis. Um, okay. I can't. Just say no to it. Okay. Uh, well, I was in your blood. me, yes. Okay. I mentioned at the start that you were honored with a leadership award with the, from the uh, Brain Injury Association. Tell us about that award. Oh, well, come uh, in August, I was uh, contacted by I, Eileen Reardon from the Brain Injury Association in Albany, the Albany office, uh, telling me that uh, their committee um, uh, uh, elected me to receive their leadership award. Um, uh, I, I wasn't even familiar with such an award. Uh, but it, it humbled me, definitely, because uh, they explained to me why uh, they had selected me, the work I do with a chapter, the outreach programs, the uh, activities coordination, uh, the advocacy work I do for them, 
We go to Open e and &E every year, contact our political representatives and inform them of what is needed. Get those elevators to work in the, uh, the subway system. The subway That's systems, the uh, healthcare services. Oh, yeah, uh, to do. There, uh, there's a lot to, uh, to do and give attention to. They appreciated uh, uh, what I gave. Oh, wait, like, so you had a little ceremony at a, we had a ceremony yeah. back in in, in November hotel. four days after the uh, marathon actually so four uh, days later you're recovering and then you have to put on uh, probably a nice suit you yes and uh, I wore my medal <laughs> you know, Achilles and the brain injury association are the two most important organizations in my life at this moment and they worked hand in hand. Uh, uh, so I, Achilles and the Brain Injury Association had to be there uh, on that podium that day. Excellent. <laughs> any future mm. events, any good uh, race that you're looking forward to? I'm going to start training with um, an Achilles, uh, my Achilles coach, uh, Anthony Bonamassa, uh, in a few weeks uh, to, for the uh, Boston Marathon. Did you qualify? It, with New York, with I ran Boston last year through the uh, AWD program, athletes with, program? Disabilities, athletes with Disabilities, where you have to come in and be able to run or complete the marathon within five hours. Okay. I gave them uh, 404. Yeah, so last year? Of this, that last year of 18, actually. Okay. This year at the New York City Marathon, I ended up doing my own Boston qualifier. Uh, for my age group. Uh, Which is what? Well, technically it's 3.55. I finished New York City with a 3.45. Time. Excellent. Yeah. 345. 345. Wow. I, it's and that's a, your personal best at this point? That's my personal best. New I was, York. Yeah, I was aiming to just break four hours with New York, but yeah, I ran New York with this incredible athlete, Annabelle, actually from Manus. And my athletes, Annabelle and Matt Sullivan, uh, ran with the entire marathon with me. When I had David Fraser here, uh, his guy to said to you, they made some changes. They've made changes. You know, yeah. it's because uh, sometimes when he was running, <laughs> they would have a uh, midpoint guide. And so now, anyway, there's, they're fine tuning it. For... They, they, they are. And I had to insist and give them information as to why I needed that second guide. Okay. Same thing happened with David Fraser. So the, the good news is, although they're fine tuning it, they're listening. You may have to mm -hmm. be aggressive about it, but that's life. We're educating them. Because you're educating right. them. That's good. I had a wheelchair person here. He has some issues with the wheelchair division. But, you know, that's important because in life, those are important skills because you run into that situation in everywhere, not only in running. Learn how to advocate for yourself. Absolutely. And then, fortunately, you, don't, you have individuals who aren't able to, so uh, you have others that will. I will. For them. You would do it. Listen, on that note, advocate. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure. Likewise. Okay.